Kia ora everybody and welcome back to Civ 5. This video is perhaps one that I should have done right at the start of the series, but as I'm going back through the catalogue and thinking about the knowledge that I need to put out there, part of me realised, hey, we haven't actually gone over the fundamental basics. So I'm going to do that now. Five years on from the initial episode of the series, I'm going to take you through the basics. If you're familiar with Civ, this video may not be for you, but if you check out the top link in the description, you'll see a more advanced tutorial that I put out recently to do with citizen management, city management, and specialists. So I'd recommend you check that one out. However, if you'd like to sit down and cover the basics with me, then please pull up a chair. And if you're relatively new to the franchise or strategy games as a whole, then this video is definitely for you. So, I've loaded up Civ 5 and I'm setting up a game. When you're setting up a game, there are a few tips I'd like to cover off. Firstly, take note of your civilization's unique ability. Write it down on a piece of paper if you can't remember it. Uh, it's written here. You can also hover over and see your unique units. You might want to write those down, maybe quickly look them up, see what era they relate to, uh, to try and figure out when you might get them during the game. You can also change the map type, the map size, the difficulty, and the pace. For new players, obviously, I think you should maybe try Chieftain or Warlord. If you're really new, go for Settler. Prince is the normal difficulty. For game pace, I would really recommend Quick, and actually this goes for new players and old. Quick is a great way to get in, get a taste of Civ, get the action without being pinned down for days and days. There is a time and place for that, but it's not here and it's not while we're learning. So let's go for Quick. Uh, you could also go Standard if Quick is a little too fast for you. We're going to leave mostly the advanced setup for another video, but just so you know, you can come in here and tinker directly with the settings. We'll cover advanced setup, though, in a separate guide. For now, let's jump in, and this is your loading screen. You'll want to take note here of your special unit, and again, your civilization's unique bonus. In this case, I'm playing as the Americans, and my military units can see a little further, and I get a discount for purchasing tiles, but don't worry about that. Here we are, into a game. Right, now, let's cover the basics. For starters, one thing that I always recommend, and regular viewers to the channel will have heard this before, so apologies, but down the bottom right here, next to the in-game map, you can toggle map options. For new players, I would recommend that you turn on resource icons, that'll show you where things are, like salt, truffles, horses. You can mine, or harvest, or farm these resources. Yield icons could also be uh, an addition that you may want to add, I'm going to leave it off for this video. Hex grid. Really useful. I'd recommend you turn hex grid on. Okay, so we're spawning in. I'm spawning in in a later era than you, uh, which I changed in the advanced settings. However, if you're spawning in the very first era of the game, you'll have one settler, one worker, and one military unit. It will be a warrior for you. Let's ignore these extra units for now. I've spawned with them so that I can get a little bit of extra visibility in the map, uh, purely for the purpose of this tutorial. So we're just going to shuffle these guys out of the way and pretend like, boom, here we are. We've got our settler. You will have a settler marked by the flag and you want to found your city. And I'd recommend you just found it right away. If you want more tips on where to found your city, uh, tactics for settling, etc. I have videos on that already. In fact, the very first video of the series was how to found a city, so I won't delve into that anymore. I'm just going to cover the basics and fundamentals of the game. I'd like to direct your attention to the top right of the screen. This is where your fundamental resources, essentially, your basic resources will filter in throughout the game. In the very top left, you'll see science. Science unlocks technology and allows you and your civilization to progress, get new weapons, build new buildings, so on and so forth. Gold. You can purchase things with gold. You can purchase buildings and units in some cases. In fact, in most cases. You can also purchase special units uh, further down the track. 
Gold is a fundamental currency, you can trade it with other players as well. You'll want that to be in the green most of the time. Next is trade routes, we'll ignore them for the time being. Happiness. You want to make sure your empire is happy, and if you mouse over the happiness, you can get a feel for where happiness is coming from, and where unhappiness is coming from. You can see here I'm generating 11 happiness in total, 9 from the difficulty level which was set to normal. If you've set it to a lower or easier difficulty, you'll have more happiness to play with by default. I'm also getting 2 happiness from my city. However, I'm losing 3 happiness, that's the unhappiness, from the number of cities I have, at the moment it's 1, and 4 from the city's population. You'll see here next to the city's name, there's a 4. That's the number of citizens in the city. It's probably 4 million, but simplified, it's 4. Okay, back up to the top right, there are other indicators that we're going to ignore for the purpose of this video because we're just looking at the basics. Fundamentally, there is one more resource that wasn't covered in the top right, and that is production. Production is, of course, your means of production. You use, your cities will use it to build buildings and units and so on and so forth. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to choose to build a water mill. You'll see it's going to take two turns. And if I click the city, I can enter the city screen. It may seem overwhelming, but take a minute to digest it. Ignore the stuff on the right, we don't need that for this video. Here's our city over on the left, and we can see it's producing 9 units of production, it's producing 10 gold, 9 science, for the purpose of this video faith is off, and 4 culture. You can ignore faith and tourism, those are more advanced, uh, and also heavily linked with the DLC for this game, and I won't assume that you have the DLC. This is how much of each of these basic resources my city is producing per turn, and that is feeding into the empire-wide totals up the top. You'll notice they're the same because of course I only have one city, and therefore there is only one city contributing to the empire totals. We can click return to map, and that'll take us back to the game. If I go down here to the bottom right and toggle map icons, yield icons, we can now see how much of these resources these tiles around the city are producing. We can see how much gold, production, which is shown by hammers, and food. You can see that different tiles produce different amounts of resources. Low-lying tiles next to a river are more likely to produce food. Tiles on hills or mountains are more likely to produce production. Tiles with extra resources, like this one here that has truffles, will also have added bonuses. You can see truffles gives 2 gold, and I have 2 lots of truffles. Salt up here provides food, and if I uh, improve this resource I'll get even more. Horses provide production. Fantastic! Now there is one other fundamental that I'd like to cover in this video and that is choosing your research. So, there's lots of research options, and if you open the tech tree you can see a whole raft of them! I've started this game in the modern era, but you'll probably be starting way down here in the ancient era. I would recommend you take pottery and animal husbandry as your first technologies, but it always pays to have a look around, around where you've settled. For example, Mining may make the most sense if you have lots of resources that could have mines built on them, things like coal. In this case we don't. Finally, take your worker and start improving tiles. You can see here that this worker can build a farm, which will provide plus two food on this tile. So this tile will go from producing two food a turn to four. And food is what makes our civilization grow, it makes the city grow. Not in terms necessarily of its physical borders, but in terms of its population. And the more people that are living in a city, the more tiles it will work. So originally it'll work four, and then 
five and then six and so on and so forth and as the city borders expand by uh, gaining culture per turn culture uh, expands borders as the city borders expand citizens will start to work these tiles and work these resources and bring in the added benefits to the empire growth is fundamental and food is fundamental I suggest, with your early workers, you prioritize increasing food. You can see here, when I enter the city screen, that this city is currently only producing one food per turn, and it's going to take 17 turns until another citizen is born, and the city goes from a size 4 to a size 5. So it's really important that you have extra food, because all the extra food you can produce will help your city grow. So, has this been a lot for you, or has this been dead easy for you? There'll be viewers from all ends of the spectrum and everywhere in between, and that is totally fine. If you found some of the concepts in this video confusing, or you're new to Civilization V, I would recommend you check out the rest of these videos from the starting order, from the order that they were uploaded. If you're looking for more advanced tips and tricks, as I say, I just recently covered specialist buildings and citizen management, which is a fundamental and more intermediate and advanced part of the game. So check out that video if you'd like more depth. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching my relatively quick and hopefully informative introduction to the basics of civilization and how Civ V works. We've covered science, gold, production, and happiness in this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the subscribe button down below, and I'll see you next time.